Man, what a great game this weekend. Um, I wasn't rooting for anyone in particular. Maybe the Chiefs, which is cool because they won. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes grew up like an hour and a half away from where I'm from. So that was my only stake in the game at all. But it's cool. Chiefs won. It was a great game. Um, but even if you don't like American football, I think that if you run a business, you should be watching the Super Bowl. Like, no question. Because of the commercials. The commercials of the Super Bowl are like the Super Bowl of advertising. I can't make that joke. It's important to watch what the big media companies are doing. They spend more money on advertising every year than we will make in our entire lives. So I think it's really important to watch what they're doing so maybe we can extrapolate and figure out for our own businesses some of the techniques that they use. So first off, what you're getting is just my dumb opinion. I'm just a dude that sells furniture in a local market. Um, I'm not any sort of professional advertiser. I'm just a professional consumer of football and I'm just trying to reverse engineer some of the ads that I saw, what I liked, what I didn't like. My criteria, what I think is a good ad is three things. Number one, is it tied directly to the product? Number two, is it memorable? Like, do you remember it? And then three, does it move your emotions? Because if you don't have all three of those components, in my opinion, you don't have a very good ad. I don't see how you're responsibly managing your ad budget. But again, what do I know? So the average price of a 30 second spot was $5.6 million this year. That's up like a half a million or so from last year. That's just for the ad. That doesn't go into the actors. That doesn't go into the, the deals. That doesn't go into the, the, the production costs. That doesn't go into the advertisers uh, paychecks. Like 5.6 million just gets you the airtime. Everything else you gotta do on your own. These are just the ones that jumped out to me. There were a ton more ads. Let me know down below in the comments what your favorite ad was. I'd really like to get everybody else's opinion on what their favorite ad was and, and why. For copyright reasons and stuff, I'm not gonna play the commercials in the video. I'll just have a link to all those in the description right below the like and subscribe button. So first up, McDonald's. They did a really fast paced commercial. It was showcasing, it was just a tray with a bunch of different food items and it had like a celebrity's name or, or a, a fictional character's name at the bottom of the screen. This jumped out to me. This is this is the ad of why I started taking notes. It was just brilliant to me because it involves so many different people from so many different backgrounds. It included everyone. So and with even fictional characters, there was somebody in that rolling list of people who you were interested in and you were curious as to what their favorite meal from McDonald's was. Another thing I liked about it was that it was so fast paced. You couldn't get through it all in just one view. If you really wanted to go see what some of those orders were, you're going to have to go watch the commercial again because it was just so fast pace. So for that reason, you're going to get multiple views on it online. People are going to track it down and find it, which is just another brand awareness opportunity. I mean, if you're running ads on Instagram or Facebook or something, give them too much to watch in one go through of the ad. And then they've watched it multiple times. They're probably going to share it and they'll come back to it later. Um, whatever. You, the, the point is that you've got them interested in the commercial. Oh, the Trump ad. I don't know. I don't care where you fall on the political spectrum. You saw the least expected demographic mentioning him by name, showing the great thing that he did for that family. And yeah, I just, that was mind blowing. Yeah, it, so something like that just muddies the waters for the people who are on the fence. There's a lot of people that don't like President Trump. There's a lot of people that do like President Trump, but then there's some people in the middle. When you do an ad like this, you just muddy the waters. Uh, for the people that are in the middle because you show them something that's so beyond their expectations of what they were going to see in a Trump ad that, yeah, they just, I, in my opinion, is a brilliant move, which this kind of ties in with the Cheetos ad, which I'll mention later, but sometimes turning people's expectations on their head is a really good strategy as well. The next one chronologically was the Porsche ad. Um, there were a lot of commercials this year that were like a fake action movie and they were turned into something else. I don't know if they were all colluding together or what, but I just saw several, several commercials that were like the fake action film um, with a twist in the end or a, a product placement or something silly like that. I thought the takeaway there was that you, they were showcasing their entire line of products and the fact that it's just a fun car to drive. So if you're running a furniture business, maybe show a party and all of the drinks and food and everything else that's like really exciting to put on your table. Um, just get people excited, see your entire range of products in one room. Um, you know, or maybe follow somebody throughout their day. Get a video made of somebody waking up in one of your beds, turning on the lamp on your nightstand, drinking coffee at the coffee table you build, eating a meal at the breakfast table. 
um, you know, just on and on and on, you can really showcase the, how fun your entire line of products are from start to finish. Oh, the Hulu ad. This one was cool. Everybody's been wondering in the news about, you know, Tom Brady, is he going to retire? What's he going to do next? And so you get this really ominous starting commercial and it's Tom Brady very clearly and everybody's knowing and he, he's making it sound like he's giving his retirement announcement. And then all of a sudden they turn gears real quick and talk about Hulu and the product. And then at the very end, even better, he says, I'm not going anywhere. So not only do they build suspense and then ruin it with a good product placement, they also gave the value which people were expecting. So even though they pulled the rug out from under the initial joke, they still gave you your uh, the suspense, which makes it doubly awesome because you've laughed, number one, at the ad about Hulu, and then number two, you actually got what you were wanting, which was his retirement announcement. That is knowing your audience, that's understanding. You've got your viewers' attention and they're football fans and you better do something football related. Hulu has been, and a lot of these online TV streaming companies have been railed on because they don't have live sports, they couldn't get their contracts. So the fact that they were advertising live sports with Tom Brady and him announcing what he's expected to do with retirement next year, it, it just, it's overlapping of a lot of good things. It, it, was a great commercial. Moving on to the Cheetos commercial. This one I thought was really good because, you know, when you eat Cheetos, the biggest complaint is that your fingers get orange and they just kind of turn that into a superpower of like people getting out of really weird jobs um, because their fingers are cheesy. So again, that's kind of like the Trump ad. You, you turn people's expectations on their head and just make turn it into a joke, make it a little more lighthearted and you make it not as intense of a problem as people thought it was before the ad. Yeah, so the takeaway from that is take your biggest complaint with your product and find a funny way to make it an advantage or the butt of a joke um, and people will be able to move on from it. Tide laundry detergent. They've been doing this for a couple of years now where they crash other people's ads. Um, I think this is a brilliant strategy. It, it's, it's the same as a collaboration you see on YouTube. It's sharing audiences. Um, and then you've always got in the back of your mind, is it a Tide ad? I don't know. You haven't seen one for a while, so it might be. And then of course the running joke, instead of buying two commercials, they bought one commercial and then bought into a bunch of other companies' commercials, which I think was a better value uh, for them at least. I really enjoyed the Budweiser commercial talking about all the typical Americans and all the things you hear about people making fun of Americans about, um, and then just taking ownership of that and uh, sh just showing people that have grit and determination and uh, just showing how silly some of those stereotypes can be that they're not one size fits all um just made you feel proud to be american you know have a beer <laughs> have a budweiser i thought it was a really good ad Ooh, and on that same note verizon so cell phone company commercials the typical commercial is some bickering between the two companies in my opinion it's just fake drama to get you to you know, pick one or the other. But with this ad, what they said was, hey, we've got this cool new technology, blah, 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 blah. We're not gonna spend 30 seconds talking about it. We're gonna show you the people that we're helping. And they rally around military, paramedics, firemen, like all doctors, all sorts of different um, non-cape wearing heroes that are highly respected in our community. And they rallied around that saying, hey, those are the people we're trying to help. They completely took it away from the we give a better value, uh, we're better than the next guy, those, these guys suck. It was just a, hey, we're changing the narrative. We're, fo we're just trying to help these people out with our technology. So sometimes when, if you're in competition or in fierce competition in town, maybe just make it an emotional argument. Make it about the people you're helping, not so much about your product. <laughs> this one was really good. The Oikos Greek yogurt commercial. Um, I, I started watching it. Okay, yeah, butt jokes. That's funny. Uh, poo poo humor is not really my thing, but I thought it was really interesting. Of course, they got a bunch of NFL celebrities and stuff. At the very end, if you didn't catch it, the very end, the little cup of Greek yogurt that they have with their logo. It was peach flavored. Now, some of you are laughing because you know what that means, but a lot of you don't. So in the world of smartphones, uh, the emoji, I'll put it right up here. The peach emoji is slang or code for a butt. So if you see that in your kids' text messages, I'm sorry, that's what it means. 
Um, so I just thought it was really funny that they had this whole commercial about different butts and uh, stuff like that. It was kind of silly, but then at the very end, they put peach flavored yogurt, which was, you know, a meme for a, a butt, which I just put it above the top. I wasn't going to write it down until I saw that. And then little details like that of just pop culture references and stuff like that can really seal the deal. It was really smart. Another thing, um, TikTok had a few commercials, which was cool, like the TikTok commercial was fine. But at the end, Fox Sports, I think it was Aaron Andrews, was on, was just on TikTok, like not doing anything, just like taking a drink or eating ice cream or something. I don't even remember. Um, why? This is like the bank sign downtown that says, follow us on Facebook. Why? We talk about this in our marketing program a lot, but just you have to give people a reason to follow you. You can't just plaster it everywhere and say, follow me on Facebook or I'm on TikTok now. No one gives a flip. You got to give people a reason to go there. You got to give them some sort of value. It just blows my mind that Fox would take that much airtime that could be sold to somebody else to just show Aaron Andrews taking a sip of a drink saying, ha ha ha, I'm on TikTok. Make someone laugh and they'll go follow you on TikTok. Make someone cry, they'll go follow you on TikTok. Teach somebody a rule in sports and they will go follow you on TikTok. It's not that hard. Oh, the Doritos commercial. I threw this up on Instagram. When I was taking notes, I put it up on Instagram. A lot of you really like the Doritos commercial with uh, Sam Elliott and Lil Nas X. Awesome, awesome ad. Uh, marrying old and new. Old Town Road was the biggest song of 2019 and I think they capitalized on it really well. The one thing that I will point out though, remember the three things we talked about with the, the brand awareness, the memorable, the memorability of it and the um, the emotions. They did the last two right. I just didn't see that many ties to the product. Like I know people will know it's a Doritos ad and maybe that's what they're banking on, but I would have liked to see more of the Doritos play a role in the ad. We really think that you would get a lot more out of our marketing program. Like I said, we sell furniture and we've done a really good job of building up a business with uh, friends and relationships in our local community. We've got a program where we share everything from uh, big picture, what direction are you going to, hey, here's 50 ideas of exactly how to start marketing in your area. So if you want theory, we've got theory. If you want practical action steps, we've got practical action steps. Really think you'll get a lot out of it. There's a money back guarantee. If for any reason you don't think the program is worth what you paid for it, send us an email, we'll give you a refund, no problems. So you have nothing to lose. It's a link in the description um, below the like button and the subscribe button. So please subscribe and like if you haven't already. Um, so that's pretty much it. Those were the ones that stood out to me the most. I know there were a couple good ones, like the Google one was obviously a big hit emotionally. Um, I didn't write it down. I didn't really find anything to pull out of that other than just try to move somebody's emotions with your product. Yeah, I hope that something that I covered sparked an idea for your business. Maybe you can work with your marketing materials. Again, we do not have the ad budgets these giant companies do and we get to see what they do with that with we get to watch their ads we get to read their playbook i think that's the best information in the world so if we can just take that pull all the essential elements out of it and then apply it to our own stuff i think we'll be set so um hopefully you also enjoyed the game but i sure hope that you took a lesson away from it um it's too big of an event if you claim to be a business owner it's too big of a marketing event uh, for you not to buy a ticket, so to speak. I've taken enough of your time. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the Super Bowl and I look forward to hearing uh, your favorite commercial and um, how you plan to use the elements there going forward in your business. Thanks. Oh, and if anybody's still watching, um, Jenny and I are in Mississippi right now for Air Force training. Um, I'm going through weather school. She is going through survival training. So she's actually eating rabbits and bugs right now in Washington State. Um, yeah, just keep her in your thoughts. It'll be my turn to go here in a few months, but we're just trying to get all this training knocked out so we can get back to Houston and uh, start our business and go full throttle. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one.